Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing The Golden Sails and this is a card game all about merchants, we are competing merchants trying to get the best set of goods to you know, impress all of the people back home to sell the most and make the most money. So how are we going to do this? We have these experts, we each have these five experts that will be used to define the cards because the cards are very special, I'll just grab one that's not in the game, you remove a lot of the deck for a two-player game. The cards are like this. Every card has every type on it. So we have spices. These are different kinds. They're, they're very expensive, and so people won't buy a lot of them, but they want different things. You will maybe find one customer for each spice, and that's why we score them like this. The more different spices you have, the more points you'll get at the end of the game. Then we have animals. Every game, you shuffle these up. These are player aids that everyone's got. So we have four, one for each player if it plays two to four. And on the other side of all of these are different ways that animals can be scored every game. In this particular game, it tells us what you'll get for particular sets. So the unicorn, for example, can be used in these two sets to score these points. So if I've got a spider, it will be with six points, for example. You can get weapons, and these are used to sabotage the ships of other players, and it's basically going to steal points from players. So the player to your left, the player to your right. In a two-player game, we, we put the cards in stacks of the particular type, and so in a two-player game, you pick one of the sides, and that's going to be what you'll get at the end of the game. Then spells will do a particular effect depending on what the spell is. This one in particular will give you four points at the end of the game for every set of those two spices that you've got in your area. And finally we have gems which will score for the biggest adjacent run that you've got. That's why you've got these numbers here to remind you that you want a continuous run. They go from one to eight. So every card represents all of these different goods that we can take and we want to try and specialize in a few things to try and score the most points. So let's just go straight into it. I am playing a two-player game against Little Glass Marty there, and the first thing that happens, I am the first player, I reveal two cards. Well, you reveal the number of cards for the number of players. I'll just put them the same way around there. And the next thing I need to do is take one of my experts, I have an expert in each area, and the expert I choose for one of these cards is going to define what that card is this round. So we can see from animals that this phoenix is uh, okay in those sets. These uh, dragons though we really want, they can be worth points even if you have one. The spices are the same, so we get points for those sets of spices, points for every spell you have at the end, and there are some weapons there. I think I am going to make this a spell and I might make a push for spells at the end but I am taking a bit of a risk there. Now it comes to Marty, he has the exact same experts and I think he will make... he's gonna start going for... he's gonna make that an animal I think. And now it goes to the person in last place in turn order to pick one of these. And Marty sees that I want spells, he's gonna grab this. So this comes spell on top. This is one of his piles. You can never have you know, multiple piles for things. And this does matter sometimes, the order that you get things in. Everything is face up apart from gems that you put face down. So it's up to your opponents to remember which gems you took. And now I am the, I have last pick. The person who has last pick can choose to replace this expert with anything that you've got left. And since it's the start of the game, I will just, I'll just take this as an animal. Who knows what's gonna happen in future. So now first player passes to Marty and he does the same. He reveals two new cards. The spells here are a point for every three different animals you have at the end of the game, four points for each set of three, and a point for every weapon you have at the end of the game. So it comes to Marty, he has to define what he wants. And he can't define anything as an animal because he did that last round. 
He could define something as a spell, but then maybe I'll just take it, since it would be obvious that he wanted it. I think he is going to make this one a spice. And for me, I think I am going to make this one a weapon. And now I get the choice. I am going to take this as a spice, I think. So there you go, I've got one animal, one spice, this expert is done with. Now Marty doesn't want a weapon right now. He is going to swap this, so he gets the weapon card back. This actually means he's got two weapon experts now. He's gonna make it a spell, so he can grab another one. So not only is this worth another two points, because it's another spell, but now he wants to make a bit of a push for animals, which might not be a great idea, actually, because he hasn't got an expert for animals. I'm the first player again. Let's look at the two cards. So the spells, four points for every uh, set of those two spices that you have, a point for every spice in general. I think I am going to define this one as a spice, I think. Marty can either make something a weapon or a gem. I think he's gonna make this one a gem. What's he gonna take? Well, it doesn't make that much difference, really. He is going to take this, because if I want to turn something into an animal when I get to change the expert around, then it would be a phoenix, and it wouldn't be worth it to do it, because you don't need two of them in a, in a set. So he has that spice. For me, I will just take this as a gem. So I have a six now. I need to remember that I want to keep going with sets like that. Marty is the first again, so we have point for every spice there. And this can adjust one of your gem cards. So he can only define something as a weapon. He will make this one a weapon, I think. For me, I can say that something's a gem. So I already have a six. Maybe getting a four would be helpful there because I, I'm gonna get to pick straight away as well. Or I could take a spider and then I've got the animal set. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make this a spider and grab it. So I've now completed that animal set for six points. Marty can turn this into a weapon since he's got another expert for weapon, but he's stuck with that. So that is gonna make, it's gonna steal two points from me at the end of the round. So now we have one expert each left. We go through all of the discards and make sure that we are back to square one with five different experts. I'm first player again, and we keep going. There are 12 rounds in the game, I think. So, ooh, two points for every spider there. And you can strengthen particular weapon types. I'm gonna make this a spell, because it would be quite nice for me. Although Marty could just take it away. That's the risk I take, though. Marty, what does he like? He wants to start getting animals. Although maybe he'd like to take that away and then look for spiders in the future. Spiders on their own are worth two points as well. Maybe he'll make that a spell and then take this one away so I'm stuck with a useless one. Yeah, he'll do that. So he is going to take this spell and he'll be on the hunt for spiders in the future. Now, I don't want that spell. I haven't got any weapons at all, never mind of that particular type. See, my gem's six, so I would have to try and get it linked up to there. It is, however, a different spice. I think I'm gonna swap it for a spice. So now I have two different spices, which is worth four points at the end of the game. Marty becomes first player. And we have, so extra points for each animal you have. Now Marty wants to try and start getting animals, but I could just take either animal is good for set, to start sets with, so. Really, he doesn't want to give me that chance. He is going to define this card as a weapon. And for me, I am going to define this one as an animal and just take it. Now I have the dragon, so the dragon could end up in a nine point set. Or if I get two dragons, six points, you know, it's really useful to have dragons. Marty, does he still want that as a weapon or does he want it as something else? He has his animal expert left. He is going to swap that for an animal. 
because that is going to start working towards his four points for every three different animals. Back to me. Two more cards, so extra points for unicorns and points for those particular sets of spices. I do already have that leaf. So what can I make it? A weapon, a gem, or a spell? I don't particularly care about those spells. I don't want Marty to have that spell. And he hasn't got a spell expert. So we're okay there. My gem is six, so they're kind of close to the gem that I need. I'm definitely not gonna make that a spell because Marty would get first pick and he would get to take. He's already got a unicorn, so that would help him. Maybe I could make that a spell. Or if I just got a different spice, oh, I haven't got a spice card, I could make it a gem. I'm gonna make that a gem. Now Marty can make something a gem, a spice or a weapon. Maybe he wants to make this a spice to try and tempt me to have it. Well, actually, it doesn't matter, does it? Because then he would have to take this as a gem. Yeah, because he wouldn't want that as a spice. He's already got that spice. He could just grab a weapon, though. But you want all of, your, all of the big points to be on the other side, really. Maybe he'll start getting gems. Yeah, he'll make that a gem and just take it. So he started off with a four on the gems. Now, do I want to keep this as a gem, or do I want to make it a spell or a weapon? I think I'm going to keep it as a gem. So now I have a six and an eight. Yep. Okay, Marty's first, and this is the last one before we refill our experts again. Okay, that is a point for every animal again. This is a universal good. This can be put on any pile as anything. So you know, if I, it's just. It counts as that type, so if I had one of these for animals and I took this, I could put it on the animal pile and then I'd get another point for animals. You know? So what does Marty want? Since he's got the unicorn, a phoenix would be nice, and, he, and I'm not going to want a phoenix, but he, he can make something, a spice or a weapon. Both those spices would be nice. Neither of those weapons really, because uh, it would kind of balance out the sides. He's going to do spice. I've already got that spice. What would he like to deny me? I can make something a spell. He doesn't want to let me make that a spell. He's going to make that a spice. So in that case, I'm going to just make that a weapon. I'm going to take, oh, but then I've got to take it. And then he's going to get a spice. There's nothing I can do about that though. Unless I want to take that as a spell. For later. No, I'll, t I'll take it as a weapon. It's 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 some use to me. It's gonna steal two points. And Marty takes this as his second unique spice. And we have used four of our experts, so I'll just refill them again. I'm first again, so let's see. Oh, extra points for dragons looks nice for me. And Marty hasn't got any, and I don't think he'd want to He's going to try and want to get... I want to get dragons, though. I want to try and make this something Marty doesn't want and then take it as a dragon. Unfortunately, he hasn't really got that spice. The weapon would be nice for him. The spell? Maybe he wouldn't take it if I made it a spell. Or a gem. It's quite far away from his numbers in gems. I'm going to make it a gem because then... That's not very useful at all for him. Marty, if he grabbed the Phoenix, that's close to getting that nine set. And it's, you know, going towards the four points for each set of three animals. Or he could just go for a spice. And then that's a third different spice. He's going to make that an animal. He sees what I'm doing. He's going to make that an animal and take this. So it's, it's a one. It's not that useful to him. Hopefully he'll be able to get a two and a three. He's going to really have to look out for those but he knew what I was, I was up to. Now, I'm obviously not gonna take this as, a, as an animal. I don't need another phoenix. So what would I like to take it as? I don't want it as a spice. Well, a, a spell, I suppose, is worth two points. A weapon, this is interesting. Now, the weapon is gonna steal two points from Marty, remember? You have to pick a side and you do all of the weapons of that side. If you get a second weapon of that type, though, they cancel each other out. All of your weapons of that type won't work. So I'm gonna take that as a spell. It's, a, it's worth two points, if nothing else. Marty's first now, so point for every gem. Oh dear, the gems are not working out well for Marty, and you know, stopping me may have hurt him more. I think to try and get, oh no. He can't link them up, can he? Because we haven't got the 
the experts to define these gems. That was a very bad decision on my part for Marty. He doesn't want me to get that spider. He wants that spider, but he can't get it. If he leaves it as something else, I will just define it as a spider and get to take it straight away. Let's see, that would get him four points, really, because he gets another two points for it being a spell. He's got two gems. Getting it as another spice, though, would be worth another four points. He really needs to make it something I don't want, though. Maybe if he makes it a weapon, it's a different type of weapon, and I can't take that weapon. Yeah, he's going to do that. Because so he can change it later. For me, a weapon on the opposite side isn't very good for me. That is a different kind of spice. That's four points. A unicorn, though, would mean I had this set and a leftover spider that would be two points. So that's, yeah, that's adding a lot of points. I'm going to do animal and take this as a unicorn. So I think Marty trying to stop me in that round really hurt him. So this is going to steal four points. It's going to steal points, so I think he's going to go for stealing rather than trying to be nice. Me again. And this is the second to last round. Extra points for unicorns. Okay then. So what can I make it? A spice, an animal, or a weapon? I don't want to make that an animal because Marty would like that. The dragon would be worth three points to me. Uh, that would be worth two points. Getting a different kind of spice would be nice. That would be worth another four points. Maybe make that a spice. I'm going to make that a spice. And then Marty, he can make something a spell, a gem, or a spice. No point going for gems. No point going for spice. He's already got that. He can take that, though. He can take that as a spice. Yeah, I've, I've not really stopped him there, have I? He knows I've got a six and an eight, so he's not going to make that a gem. I need that spice. He's not going to make it a spice. The spell would only be worth two points. He's going to make it a spell. Now, he could just take that, and it's worth four points to him. And then I'm just going to get that spice. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, he's going to take the spice. It's a different kind of spice for him. That expert's gone. For me, do I want it as a spell? If I took it as a weapon, that's going to earn me four points rather than two. If I took it as an animal, an extra dragon. Let's see, it's it's worth another three points to take a dragon. I think let's take it as a weapon. So I get the spell card back. The weapon expert goes away. And I have another weapon. And the last round. Marty's first. So let's see. He wants that spider. I don't think he's going to get it. Let's see, he can make something a gem. Or a spice. He needs either of those spices. I think he's going to make this one a spice because he knows I don't need it. And for me, I can make this a spell. That would be worth two points. I have two gems. I could make it an animal. Then I would have another phoenix, which would go with that spider. Spider and phoenix. That's perfect. Let's make that a phoenix. Take it over here. And that is it for me. Marty. Does he want that as a... If he takes it as a spice, that's worth four more points. If he takes it as a gem, that's not going to be worth many points at all, is he? And then... Oh, he's not going to have three different animals. Uh, he's messed up a bit. <laughs> well, I've messed up for Marty. That is the end of the game. So we come to the lovely score sheets that come with it. So before the scoring, if anyone has universal goods, you sort them out now. First of all, everyone scores their spells. So my spells are just two points for every dragon. I've got one, so that's two points for a dragon. Marty, two points for every spell, so that's six. Four points for every three animals. He only got one animal, so nothing there. And he didn't get any spiders, so six points on spells and two wasted, well, the spell cards were worth two points each, I suppose, but they didn't do anything extra. Next, we do gems. So you work out your sequences of gems, and then however, however big that sequence is, you square the number and that's how many points you get for it. So if I had six, seven, eight, that would be a run of three. Square that, I would get nine points for it. As it is, I've just got two individual runs and one squared is still one. So that's just two points for gems. Marty did the exact same thing. Just gets two points. 
Then we come to spices. I have two different spices and we can see on the reference sheet that's worth four points. Marty got four different spices, which is worth 12 points. Animals. Now this is where you get to break them down into your own personal groups. So I think, I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about it, but I think the best I can do is these two groups. Then I would get nine and six. That's 15 points. And oh, I've really messed up for Marty. For having a unicorn, he gets nothing. The, the zoo doesn't just want a unicorn and nothing else. For weapons, we have to work out at the same time, really, because you negate each other by stealing. So in a two-player, in a, in a multiplayer game, you would, you know, take that many from the player on your left, that many from the player on your right. In a two-player game, you pick a side and do that side for all of your cards. I'm obviously going to do that side, so I'm going to steal four points from Marty. He, though, has done the exact same thing, and he's going to steal four points from me. So we've just cancelled each other out there. So let's see, 19, 21, 23 for me and 18, 20 for Marty. So it's not, you know, it's not a landslide, but there we go. I just about won. And that is a full and very quick game of the Golden Sails. Hope you enjoyed that and it shows you how the game is played. If you'd like to know what I think, then you can click the card up there somewhere. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.